It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. I had a comment on the last video from Natural 20 Games, uh, the last video of this series, uh, 7 by 7 Ages of the Pope Leg of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. It asked me to explain how these cards uh, affect the game, uh, which was a very helpful question because I don't really know what information is is being imparted or am I skimping on. I mean, there, this this game in particular, there's a lot of different balls for me to juggle. Like I realized, for one thing, I, w I was on, on reflection that I haven't talked a lot about the um, the interpersonal drama here and the personalities as much as I might on some other games, and that's just because there's there's a lot for me to process. Partially, you know, it's it's a it's a big kind of wonky game in some respects, and also I've made a lot of the rules up and didn't really codify them, so everything's kind of fuzzy and like wobbly already and there's already a lot for me to think about um you know even seven ages in and of itself if i if i do were to do that with uh multiple players uh, all under my control nominal control um even that would be kind of difficult to to think about it all because one there are there are interrupt cards anytime there's a card game with interrupt cards that's that makes it a lot less playable solitaire and then also, you know, each player essentially has different players among them. So I could, I could, maybe I should on my whiteboard make a little um, tree where, you know, it's like I'm kind of at, at the top because I'm egocentric in this case. And because, you know, they need my hands to move the pieces. Um, and then, you know, you would go branch out to all the different players and then from them would be all their empires and then from the empires would be all their different units. So, um, so anyway, I thought I would talk about what these cards exactly do, because I'm sure if Natural 20 Games has a question about it, and he's been following the tournament uh, more closely than some, uh, then others might as well. Alright, so, what do they do? These yellow cards, uh, when players trade, they get a certain uh, number of trade dice in the way I'm playing, um, based on the card that they trade to another person, and also based on... Uh, certain empires will have a plus or minus to their trade rating. Usually it's one or one or two, if anything at all. Um, these will add additional dice. So here we have Cowboys Phoenicians stack of cards. They have the most impressive, so I figured they'd probably have a good good range of cards to talk about. Actually, he doesn't have any... Oh, he does. Never mind. Just had those kind of separate. Um, so he, he gets to add a plus three... Uh, to the number of dice he rolls for trading above everything else. Um, then we have the science cards. Science cards do a couple things. One, um, if you have more of a particular symbol than someone, when you fight, so if the Phoenicians were to fight someone who had none of these, right, and they have one, then you get an additional dice. Now there's three different science symbols, so you compare each of them, and for each one that one player has that the other player doesn't, or, you know, one player has more of than the other player, they get a plus one to their die roll. So it's a, science can give you a potential plus three in combat if you're more scientifically advanced in all aspects. Also, if you have the most science points total, um, as figured, like in Seven Wonders, you get the free advance at the end of the turn, and you're the only empire that gets to do that. Um, so right now, if we look at Cowboys... I haven't figured this in for a while. He would have, let's see, like 9 here plus 7 is 16. He might not be the ahead anymore. I should actually tally that up. Um, but he has 16 science points, which is pretty decent. Uh, so there's that. These cards, these blue wreaths, anytime you get wreaths, so you can get it with purple cards or, yeah, I guess that's, that's pretty much it. Um, whoever has the most wreaths, when compared, compared to another player can play can play cards on that player essentially and that's outside of the combat cards so cards like earthquakes and volcanoes and diseases and all that if you have more wreaths than someone else you can do it to them and they can't do it to you and that's how it is this is kind of um you can look at it a couple of different ways it's either favor with the gods or this sort of um uh like the world is appreciative of your cultural works and thus will will give you this kind of karma or this luck. Um, it's just a way of, I don't know. And then you have these these shields. Um, these, if you have 
more of these than the person you're fighting, you get to play combat cards against them, and they can't play them against you. So last time, and this is the example I think I typed in text as well, when, uh, who was it that got in a fight? Well, use these cards. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the Dutch, Runt's Dutch, attack giraffes, um, Romans, the Romans were able to outflank the Dutch, even though the, the Dutch had stronger forces, because they, they had a stronger military culture. So the Dutch had bigger forces, but the, the Romans are more warlike, and thus, uh, you know, more, their brains were more geared towards combat, and thus they were able to outflank, is kind of how it all works. That's what those cards do. The resource cards, I thought about roping those into production, but they're, they're strictly separate. They only affect... Um, what cards you can play, you know, so for building cards. So, for example, this would take two wood and something else, you can't really see it too well, um, if you need those resources. And you can, if you don't have the resources, you can buy them from someone else. Or from the bank, I just determined. You can buy for three, three of these, one of these, a pop from the bank. Um, what else? Finally, the, it, having a scientific advantage is supposed to do something when the leaders fight in Duel of Ages, but I always forget to do it. If I remember, I'll talk about what those advantages are. Right now, we should get to play it. Hmm? 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 Right, so as you recall, last time, uh, we had several people discard empires. One of those was Flush, and Flush has just revealed who he is bringing in to take their place. That's the Portuguese. Now, key to the Portuguese, and I can't actually find the leader marker for this Henry fellow. It's, as I've talked about before, it's one of the difficulties of this game and I didn't I didn't organize it well I probably should have used a counter tray or something and had them organized by age but instead I have them all over the place um, but the, the counters are double sided too so it could be a fort somewhere or a plus one go somewhere and plus I've had this game set up for a long time and I find little counters on the floor just like wind blows them off I don't know so anyway I, I found out the information uh, but because he starts out with a leader, Henry, who's an administrator, he was able to get a lot, a lot of units um, to start off with. Normally, the Portuguese, they only start with 12, but if you have that administrator, that decreases the cost of units to the point where you can just really, really buff up there. That allowed them to, to take out, easily take out the Romans who were sitting in Portugal, which got rid of um, also one of a Roman boat. And now he's got some Portuguese, a big stack of Portuguese right there in Portugal. And our next new one is the Sudanese here in Sudan, home of an elephant. Um, that's giraffes new people there, and that's going to be uh, a big in intrusion into, uh, into Run's hegemony. She's got, uh, giraffe has kind of a two-pronged intrusion now into Africa, which should be interesting. The, the, the Pharaonic Egyptians have been pretty dominant and just scoring a, a flat six points for turn after turn after turn for Runt now. That's really all Runt's been riding on. I mean, Runt's been far ahead for, for quite some time, ever since Milky kind of lost his perch. But um, but now, and there there really has been nothing to, to take that away from her. Now it seems like there's going to be a bit of a challenge. We have the Phoenicians here right outside of Egypt, um, and then also now the Sudanese here right next to Egypt. So Runt's gonna, in a tough position there. Egypt's really the, the heartland of, of her entire uh, African empire. Um, if she loses Egypt, she loses her money. Not the worst thing in the world, but that's where most of her forces are too. And she really can't commit them either way without having to worry about the other one. So that's going to be tough. Then she also has these Spaniards coming down here. She is fortunate that the Portuguese are now here. That's going to make it so the Spanish are not going to want to... Um, uh, leave Spain too much because the Portuguese could just come at them. Though on the other hand, if you look at the Portuguese, they're not that interested in uh, Spain or or Europe for that matter. They really need to be go taken to the water and going to other places. So if the Spanish want to worry about the Portuguese, they need to worry about them actually taking their African territories more than their Spanish territories. So as you recall from last time, Cowboy started the Scots here in Scotland. Um, that led to a rather large reaction from Melky this turn, who had to use a good chunk of the English's funds. They were up to like 40 or so, um, because the English score on money, so he was, he was building that up. And then he, uh, Melky used this mobilization card, which allowed him to put as many units as he wanted in a, in a particular space. Normally you can only do that when you're starting an empire, 
and in a few other cases. But um, so that that helped Melky in some ways, and also is going to hurt him in others. One, he's going to lose his chance to have the most money, which is a good point score. Another is he's have he had to do a big build up in England, which he doesn't really want to have to do. He wants to build up other places because that's what he scores on. He scores on having. Uh, areas not in Europe and England is in Europe. So he's got this trouble at home even as he's trying to expand into the new world. Good thing about this mobilization though is he was able to put a lot of people in South America which is relatively barren right now of human life um, aside from runs people to the north of South America. So he should be able to expand and maybe score some points that way. Um, there's a I think a three or four way competition now for Europeans outside of Europe. We have the Spanish, who are, I think are the current leaders with three areas. Um, we have the English, and then the Portuguese now, and I think that's it. So three-way competition for that. Commented on this before, but it's always interesting to me, um, and not interesting enough that I sit down and think about it, but or walk around and think, but actually I do most of my thinking while walking, not sitting. I have a hard time thinking while sitting. I can think while laying down or while walking. I think maybe because uh, laying down and walking are the two best uh, positions for blood flow, I think. Standing in one place and sitting are both bad for your circulation, whereas walking and laying down aren't. Um, and I feel like it's easier for me to think when my blood is flowing for some reason. Maybe there's some connection there, because those are, I don't know, or maybe those are just correlations that um, aren't, don't prove causation. Anyway, I went on a tangent. Um, oh, it's always interesting to me how the people here will kind of pick similar things. I don't know if that has to do with the flow of the game, the rhythm of the game, or if that's just my own rhythm because I'm controlling them all. That's always hard for me to separate. And I've talked about that before. It's interesting now, not interesting now, but I'm bringing it up now because when we had a couple, a lot of, um, well, we had three discarded empires the last turn, then three, well, two started empires. Only one production phase, no trade in progress. There's been a lot of trade in progress lately. No one has done it out of what do we have? 15 empires. We didn't have any trade in progress. Now, granted, a good chunk of them have started, and that, that made it so that other empires had to kind of react to that starting. But we didn't even see a lot of production either, which is a common reaction to a starting empire is to produce, to rebuild. Um, I guess because you don't know that they're where they're going to start. That would be why. Yeah, the only production was right here because he knew the Scottish were going to start. Anyway, so now we're going to. We're thinking we're going. We got to have a lot of maneuvers, right? I don't remember what all I picked, and I haven't looked too closely on what people are going to do. But if there aren't a lot of trade and progresses, and there aren't a lot of productions, there's got to be a lot of maneuvers, right? There's got to be. It looks like it's going to start with the Toltecs, Aztecs. All right. So since I have. Um, few Scotsmen, or at least a couple, watching this, I thought I would go in, and it's kind of a big fight, right? It's in, it's this uh, cowboy, against all the odds, he sent his Scots folk down from Scotland to, to attack uh, Melkies in England. He figures, you know, what else is he going to do with them? He, he decided to have them maneuver. They have nowhere else to go. He kind of set it up so he could take a swat at Melky uh, for future point competition, if he can get, if he can cause the English a, a hard time, um, then that is going to help him in the long run. And uh, Cowboy's a fairly direct person. He's not going to um, just keep them there and continue to, to harass the English. He wants to uh, cause some, some quick and dirty damage and then maybe move on to another empire if this isn't going to work out. All right, but now the Scots have an advantage, and that advantage is that these fellows here get to add two uh, because they're Scottish to their strength. So that's going to give them a cool 18 plus 10, that's 28 points total. And I haven't actually added this up yet, so we'll see. And then on Melky's side, Melky kind of, he has more forces, he has the, the defensive advantage um, for being in woods, and I think that gives him a plus one. Yep, I had to r remind myself of that because that's something I've gotten wrong a lot. It's income two plus one as opposed to the jungle, which is income two plus two. I always got those. I, I kind of thought they were the same at one spot, but that's not true. Okay, so let's look. We have 10, 18, 
19. Whew, that's tough. 19, 20, 23, 24. And then he's going to get a plus 1, so 25. And then he gets plus 1 for the science, that's 26. And what do we say here? We had 18, 28. 28 to 26, that's going to be a close match. So I'm going to get all that rolled up, and then I can kind of go through what, what goes on. Which is a good reminder for you, because it's kind of a rules reminder uh, edition of the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. Just kind of how I'm resolving everything. Okay, so it's supposed to be 33 for the English and 28 for the Scottish. That's just more dice than I, I own. Um, yeah, I don't even know where I got these dice, to tell you the truth. But, um, so I'm, I, I reduced it to um, 13 to 8, which is still a lot of dice, but it should be easier. Let's see what we get. Okay, so if you recall from way back when. I haven't done this on camera for a while, but first thing we're going to do is we're going to sort uh, the dice so that they're in fudge dice type columns. So the high ones, those are going to be plus dice. The, the middle ones are neutral and the low ones, such as this one here, are minus dice. Here we go. So we're seeing the British have, a, or the English, I'm sorry, have a lot of defense, not much attack relative to the number of dice they rolled. And the Scottish have it's not a super good roll all at all. All right. Um, generally, these are a little worse than the pluses and the minuses. Um, so the English get to go first because they have more attack dice. H how you figure it out is if you have the most attack dice, you go first. If there's a tie, then you go to defense dice. If there's still a tie, you go to the middle dice. All right. But there's not a tie. So we're going to go here. He goes to attack. A uh, cowboy could either run away. He could counterattack. Or he could defend. And I think he wants to defend. So he's going to put that up. Now what, uh, how a defense works is this drops out. This is kind of the pile where it doesn't count. It's just out of, out of the com competition. And this counts as like a point for... Uh, Melky's English. Now it's Cowboy's turn. Cowboy is going to attack. Pretty much you, your choice is you can attack or not. <laughs> you know, attack or give up. Um, or try to propose a compromise to end the conflict. Uh, but these guys, they always just fight. Alright, so attack. Melky has more than enough of these. He's going to defend it. Um, that's going to go back to Melky's turn. Melky... Um, He's going to attack. Now here, Cowboy's got some, some choices. He could defend and then, you know, attack on his turn, have Melky defend it, leave Melky to attack again. Um, or he could try to use some of his neutral dice. Now how I... The neutral dice in, in my system replaces the traits in the How We Came to Live Here game, which is where I took this system from. Um, but you have to use two of them to use it as a trait. So what you can do is you can get rid of two dice in order to roll another die, um, which wouldn't make a lot of sense. Or you could use two dice to flip a die. Um, well, I guess it kind of would make a lot of sense. Uh, so what does he want to do? What does Cowboy want to do? I think Cowboy's going to just straight up and defend and not, he, he's not really going to make any choices other than just kind of a regular choice um, until he has to. So he's going to attack then to defend. And Melky's going to attack and I think here Cowboy's going to take two of these away. I'm going to just stick those down there in order to roll a new die. We'll see what it is. And he got another neutral die, which is not what he wants. Um, so what does he want to do? Does he want to take another risk? Or does he want to flip the die and make it a defense die and then end the competition? Now, it's not in his best interest to make it a defense die, actually. So he's going to remove these, turn it into attack die. Um, no, he can't do that. He's going to, I think, yeah, he kind of has to, well, hmm. I, I, you don't know why I'm, I, I'm sorry, you're, you're listening to me think, but I don't think you know why I'm thinking. Um, so what makes it tricky is... He doesn't want to just make it a defense die because then he's it's going to be his turn to go next, right? Um, and then 
it he won't be able to attack and then the winner you know if you can't attack the other person just gets two bonus dice so he'd be giving up three dice right if he can make it an attack die he has to give up a die in order to do that do a counter attack and then Melky has to give him a die and then on his next turn he's going to he's going to lose out anyway um, he could do nothing and just give him two dice that's what happens if you do nothing but then he has to give him two more dice uh, for losing again or for not being able to attack or he could just take the two away and roll a die and hope he gets a defense die. I think he's gonna do take the two away and just do the give him the defense die, and then on his turn he's gonna get two more. So it ended up being five dice to two. Usually what the attacker does is they will or the winner does is they'll take away two of their dice in order to take away two dice, and that gives him three dice that he can use to to damage cowboy in other ways. Um, oftentimes that's to get rid of units, and that's probably what he's going to do. He's going to get rid of these pesky frontline units here, which are so strong for the Scots, and leave these guys to retreat back to Scotland. So, not an ideal result for Cowboy, but not the end of the world either. What was his other choice? He could have not attacked. Yeah, would that have done a lot? It, maybe it would have, I guess, made it so that Melky would have had to keep those units there and, you know, have to always be worried about the Scottish. He doesn't have to worry so much about the Scottish next, now. He's probably going to want to maneuver on his next turn anyway, so that would be, you know, he's probably going to try to finish off the Scots with this, these forces so that he doesn't have to worry about it. Um, you know, once once Melky was able to, to get so many units there with that mobilization card, there wasn't a lot Cowboy could do. And I think he kind of accomplished his purpose anyway. He annoyed Melky, you know, which is kind of what he wanted to do. Uh, it's going to end up taking away points from him in the long run. Uh, maybe it's just two points, but oh well. That's going to maybe maybe make the difference for Cowboy once, once he's going to have to be worried about Melky on this track. What else happened this maneuver phase? Well, mostly a lot of positioning, but interesting positioning. I think that was our only fight was between the Scots and the English. Um, first thing that happened is the Aztecs, they, they started to extend even further into South America. That's going to, uh, I'll have to do a quick count, but I think, I think she still has fewer than the Plains Americans. But, uh, you know, that's going to bring them closer to, uh, to beating Cowboys total in North America. Uh, for, for the Americas. It's also brought her closer to the English so that she could make a trade with them, kind of like cowboys trade with the English, in order to get horses and boats. Because um, anyone who starts in the New World, they start without those abilities, which is important for particular units. It really cuts down on the number of units you can have, much less, and even more so the strength. Or not more so, but also the strength. Um, Likewise, the Spanish, they, they did some ex extending, didn't expand as much as they wanted to um, because the Portuguese were there. So Giraffe did some kind of nominal reinforcements. Wasn't a lot she could do. Uh, was, uh, these mountains, she had a lot of forces in the mountains. It takes a lot, a lot of time to get through the mountains. Um, the Japanese, they took their plains areas. These are each worth a point for Flush, which is good for him. I still don't think he's going to have time to um, catch up to Cowboy. I mean, Cowboy's a whole row in front of him, but still, that's going to help close the gap and maybe give him, uh, I don't know, make him feel good. He hasn't given up anyway, even though it doesn't look good for him right now. I mean, the Phoenicians just have to get here. And Cowboy, or Flesh is gone. What else for maneuvering? I think that was it. Yeah. Just finished up the Destiny phase. Giraffe used a card that let her do Civilize right after Destiny, which is nice. Um, which essentially gave the Romans two different actions in a turn. It's called a rare conjunction. Um, what did she do with that extra time? Well, she created a disease that ate away at the fins and also a tsunami that destroyed the fins. She's really trying to maximize the, the Roman points here. Um, and she did so by getting rid of their land total so that sh that the Romans could have the most of Europe. And I think that's the case right now. I gotta check again when Romans, uh, when, when this turns into wheat, I think it's age five. So if the Romans can get up here, that's gonna suddenly be a lot of points scored for giraffes Romans, because they're gonna have European dominance, and then each of these will count as wheat spaces, whereas now they're just forests.
Red Saronic Egyptians just hit the Spanish with a special combo double punch. First they created fires right here which um, caused there to be uh, disorder in each of these regions. And then she caused a rebellion uh, to happen in any Spanish area that had disorder. So she wiped out most of the Spanish just with that move. She almost did it to the Plains Americans. Um, because they already had four disorder there, so she hit the fire. She could have gotten rid of all but three units. Then she, that would have just given her a point. She sees giraffe as the bigger problem for her than um, than the the um, sorry the than cowboy and his plains Americans. So flesh has just done a rather curious play. This is called New World, and it's curious because one, it allows you to warp guys across. You know from one place, in this case Portugal, to another place, in this case over here, um, in order to simulate, I guess, moving to the new world. The thing is, the, the game gives a mechanism for that, right? You could just go across with boats. Um, but, and also it's curious because it, it's, I think it's the Pope who does that, who allows you to do that. And the Pope is uh, actually a player, which is the Romans here. So in this case, it was the Siamese <laughs> played New World on the Portuguese, which allowed them to go over here. Um, whatever, it's it's going to be something. And so basically what it does is it lets you pick four areas, and then you have you those areas are like given to you by the church. And um, those four areas happen to be... Uh, Plains American areas. Funny about that. Plains Americans are Cowboys' big scorer. Flush is a competitor of Cowboys. So we're gonna do. We're gonna roll up three combats, and we're gonna be going from north to south. I guess um, this one's gonna be three against three. This is three against one. Three against one. Three against one. And we'll just see how that all shakes out, so to speak. And we'll have Cowboy be yellow, and Flush be red. All right. Good roll for... What did I miss? One must have bounced out. Huh. All right. Very similar rolls. So in this case, um, Cowboy's going to go first. He attacks. Flesh has nothing to defend with. Uh, with the three and three, that's a little weird. So he's going to have to do nothing. He has to give up two dice to, to Cowboy. Um, then he gets to counterattack. He uses that. He does this. He can't answer with anything. Cowboy wins that one, so it's four to one. Um, so let's just remember that four to one because I want to just roll all of these up really quick. And we'll just do a grand total here. So right now it's four to one. Cowboy's favor. Oh, this time it's actually th should be like that. Three to three to one, right? Okay, so here, so here it's going to be straight up, bang, he can't do anything. So now it's uh, four to three, flush, still cowboy's favor. This is the third one. And here we have, it's going to be, a, yeah, it's going to just keep happening this way, won't it? Um, so now it's five to... Oh, actually, Cowboy should probably... Let's let's hold back. I was going a little faster than they would be going. So probably after this one, after he won this one, he's going to be retreating. But, uh, yeah. Do we let him retreat? No, I think he's got to do the fight. Let's just do the fight. Um, that's a bunch of defenses. I guess... I guess uh, Flush loses that one in this system. This is kind of weird. So now it's uh, six to five. Cowboy's favor. And this one, uh, Flush is going to win. So it's seven to six. All right. So seven to six. If we look at the map, um, I think Flush wants to try and keep his units. So he's going to get rid of all of Cowboy's dice um, and then just get rid of one unit. And I think that unit will be this guy right here. And then the rest of these will all be retreating. Like so. Um, maybe he wants to put that there. Yeah. 
I just seen a good example of why uh, it's good for cowboy might be beneficial for Cowboy to keep the Phoenicians even though they are not scoring uh, for beans for his uh, his side in glory. Um, and that is their wreaths. They have so many wreaths that he was able to play this powerful card, Empire Collapses, on the English. Um, got rid of any any units they had in disordered areas and then also disorder and then disordered any areas that it didn't get rid of units in so that's going to I mean got rid of the boats that were in the Bay of Biscay and then disordered everything else that's going to hurt Milky quite a bit powerful card imagine he considered maybe doing it on Runt that would have really damaged Africa but Runt's not really I mean I guess here she could take some some points from him, but she's not really a, a huge competitor for him. He's really got to be worrying most, mostly about Melky right now. All right, the scoring has kind of shifted from what it's been. Um, first of all, Flush scored hugely. Uh, Siamese are still scoring a solid two, even though nothing's going on there. Just nothing's going on over here, so just by being there, they get two points. Uh, the Portuguese, they got three. Because of that new world, whole, whole new world thing, they have... Uh, the most outside of Europe right now. Uh, that's that's a sort of a cup that's been passed around quite a bit now. So far, the English have had it, the Spanish have had it, and now the Portuguese have it. They're the the best colonists supposedly, though I wouldn't say that they have the best position in the New World or outside of Europe. But certainly better than the Spanish, who just are sitting on Carthage right here. Um, so. Portuguese scored him three, Siamese two, Japanese a ton of points. They have the most waterways currently, the most money, they have uh, their homeland, and they have three wheat areas now going into China. So that's that's a huge boom. I think that was eight points altogether. Uh, let's see, so, so yeah, eight points. Uh, English for their part, or Melky, I say English because that's his big people right now. Um, they, did, they lost their boat their boat uh, majority, they lost their money majority or any chance to get it, they lost their, they only got, they got two points off of the Europe thing and one off the homeland. Finns only scored off homeland. Milky kind of took a beating this turn. Uh, he tried an assassination, I didn't do it on camera, but it failed, so only five points for him. Cowboy only five points. He um, is tied for the most points in, the, in, in America. But um, since it was Runt's turn, she got the she she was considered to be first place. So that only gave him one point instead of two. So his Plains Americans only got two points instead of three, which they had been getting. Phoenicians two, Scots only one. Um, so only five for him. Still, that's gonna keep him. You know, he just has three turns if he doesn't trade. So you know, if if Flush continues to get close. Which, you know, even though Flush bumps up 13, he bumps up 5. So Flush is only gaining on him 8 every turn. You know, that's not going to be enough. Um, Giraffe also, Romans did great. Spanish not so good. Sudanese, they have some potential. Um, her whole Spanish endeavor kind of got kind of got stymied by Runt with the fire thing. And so that, that hurt her scoring potential. Romans are still doing really nice. If if it turns out that wheat becomes viable in forested areas in age five, she is going to be scoring huge. This time only seven. Not as good. So Flush was our high scorer, then Runt, then Giraffe, and then our two people at the the this end of the table uh, next. So Definitely, I you know I talk about um, all the the different like how hard it is to keep track of this game some, uh, but it's definitely a lot of fun. Like I'm I'm really enjoying like all the different interactions going on. So I've I've really been enjoying this. Uh, it can sometimes make me feel tired, but a lot of times it's also invigorating. So we'll see what happens next time. Things are things are there's a lot of spice like. Um, a lot of changes going on. I like I like this, although it's kind of weird. Um, yeah, but we'll see what happens next. I've been talking a lot. Next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament.